today we're going to talk about opals. I love opals, they're my favorite stones. So my name's Todd Allen, I've been a jeweler for 30, 40 years, well 40 years, <laughs> and I've made over 18,000 wedding rings and all kinds of pieces and gemstones and blah blah blah. And uh, my daughter is lovely Lyra and she works yeah. with me and has been with me for ages, ever since she was born. <laughs> <laughs> And today we're going to talk about opals and all the different kinds of opals and uh, we got quite a spread here. So. It's the October birth sun. So happy October everyone and for all you with October birthdays. Happy birthday and we're going to talk about your birthstone. Okay, tourmalines are also an October birthstone and you know really quick if you want a ring you might go with a tourmaline. They're harder, they're going to wear a lot better, um, but today we're going to talk about opals. All right, opals are really a wonderful stone. In fact, opals are probably one of my favorite stones. And if you've never seen an opal, what happens is they're often white, but there's all kinds of different opals, which we're going to talk about, mm -hmm. but they play color. Light hits it and you see reds and blues. And, you know, I can only imagine what ancient people would have, you know, <gasps> they would be so magical. magical. That's, in fact, that's the only word. Yeah, when I was thinking, like, what's a word to describe opals? It's magical. Mm -hmm. So some stuff about opals. I have a lot of opals. I got opals in here, opals here, opals here. And the reason I have a lot is because they are one of my favorite stones. Um, so what makes opals so special? One is they have water in them. Not like drips of water, it's molecularly, scientifically complicated. But anywhere between 2 and 30 percent of an opal can be water. And that's part of why if your opal freezes, it'll break. If you leave it out in the sunshine and it gets too hot, it'll break. In fact, the whole breaking thing of opals is really interesting because, you know, opals were considered bad luck. But I remember when I was growing up, the whole thing was you can only have an opal is if it's your birthstone. And if it's not your birthstone, then it's bad luck. But, you know, for me, I, I think that part of that just came from because they break. They're soft on the Mohs scale. They're only like between five and a half, six and a half, somewhere in there. I don't recommend it for rings. No. A lot of people, they want an opal ring. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, we sell opal So I do rings. make them because people want them, but I tell them it's a dinner ring. When I say a dinner ring, it's a really nice ring that you wear when you go out to the theater or to- <laughs> To a fancy ball. <laughs> to a fancy ball, right. But you do not wear it every day. It really is just a special occasion ring. But it's also really wonderful in pendants. And I've mounted lots of opals because I really like them. Most people associate opals with Australia. The reason is, is that most of the nice opals all came from Australia. Mm -hmm. for the longest time. I remember early in my career, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, opals were fairly available and they were all Australian. That was just the thing, Australian opals. But then they started getting more and more and more expensive because the mines were slowly mining out the easily accessible opals. I literally got very frustrated with opals as much as it was my favorite stone. I probably had 10 years I didn't even buy them or carry them. And then a magical thing happened, and that is Ethiopia. They discovered a new mine. There was an older one, but there was a new one in 2008 that was discovered. It had really nice material and lots of it. And so by 2009, Ethiopia changed the opal market all over the world. And suddenly opal was back on the market. And I was just, I was saying, you and I, oh yeah, I just started, <laughs> it was in the gem shows. Like, yeah, and that one, 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 and that. Because I know gemstones come and go. So right now, opals more affordable because we just had a big mine open up. But it's only a matter of time. You know, when we talk about investments and what's a good investment and, you know, rare gemstones and there's often only one mine or several mines, and once a mine is mined out and the material is bought and it's marked up, things can change over time. Right now, opals are very cool. Ethiopian opal, highly recommended. It. It's beautiful. Uh, I even got just this piece, which is really my, my masterpiece piece. It is a 77 karat opal, and this was not an easy thing to find. I connected with dealers directly from 
Ethiopia. And it's got, you know, the honeycomb on the back. It's perfectly clean. It's 77 carats. The color is fabulous. And so uh, it was an opal that I decided to add to our collection. Types of opals. Okay, let's start off with black opal. So black opals are probably one of the more rare, if not the rarest of opals. Uh, they originally, the really nice black ones came from Australia. And the real nice, true great black opals do come from Australia. There are some black opals coming out of the Ethiopian mines, okay. and some of them are nice, but they're also treating some of them to turn them black. So you need to be a little bit careful. Uh, I only have one real uh, Australian black opal. It's an amazing stone, quite rare, and really quite valuable at this point. That's like a magical, look at the Fire I reds know. In there. And red is actually one of the rarer colors in the stone. If you got reds, that's really a good thing. You want reds in your opal if you, you know, if you want a really nice, and they call it fire. It's not a fire <laughs> opal, but they talk about the more color that's in it, that's how much fire an opal has. And this particular black opal does have a lot of fire. And then I have um, right here is a treated Ethiopian black opal. Uh -huh. And so, you know, it's a real mystery about what the treatment is. I tried everything to get my, my Ethiopian <laughs> opal dealers to talk about it, but they went factory secret. But you can see it's, it's, it's different. Yeah, your treated Ethiopian black opals are on the market, and they're really not any more expensive than your regular opals. Okay, next up. Is there Mexican fire opals? Very good. Woo! Yay, Mexican fire opals. So these are opals that were found in Mexico, mm -hmm. and there's particular mines that have them, and they don't look like opals at all. Um, you know, usually when you think of opal, you think of like a white matrix with pretty colors coming through and stuff like that. But the Mexican fire opals are orange and they're they're really their their own thing they have water in them just like regular opals and they are also soft right in the same you know color range they're really very pretty and they're actually getting a little more rare um something i used to see 20 30 years ago uh, i would see a lot of fire opals now you just don't see them so often but for me fire opals to me are like the only real orange stone. Uh, again, same thing. You don't want it in rings, even though it's very pretty in rings. Uh, want to keep it more in pendants. It's a softer stone. It can break. It can crack. They don't throw a lot of fire don't colors. And then you also mentioned, what did you mention? Uh, water? Water opals. I do have some of those. Okay, okay. These are really beautiful water opals. These are all from Australia. So these are original, really nice. But look at when I take it off the black background, it's almost perfectly clear. They're like little water drops. That's why they call them water opals. So water opals are neat. All right, synthetics and duplications, like what uh, opals out there. There are something called opal doublets and opal triplets. And this is a much less expensive, much more common opal. And what it is, is it's a very thin, thin slice of opal. If you look at the side, you'll see multiple layers. The this is a triplet then, okay? The bottom, which is oftentimes black onyx, because if you have black behind an opal, it actually brings out the color more. So in the triplets, they have a black matrix or a black stone on the bottom. Then they have the thinnest slices of opal. I mean, like, <laughs> it, I, I, we, I, it's so thin it can't even show it on a camera, really. Um, and then they usually use like a quartz top. So there are three different stones glued together. It's a way that they can basically have the real opal look, oh, do nice. it really <laughs> inexpensively. So all of these are doublets and triplets. And again, you can tell, you look at the back. If you look at the back of it and it's black, it's not a, it's not a, a natural straight opal. It's going to be an opal or a triplet. Like these ones right here, you look really close at them. They're kind of checkered board opals. You see all the different, these are like little opal specks <laughs> that they glued onto the matrix and then polished them. So it's not even a solid layer of opal. It's a bunch of little opal flecks kind of in there again. Very affordable when you see opal jewelry, you know, in silver, very inexpensive. It's probably a doublet or a triplet. Um, the other thing that makes uh, opals like less expensive mm -hmm. is if there's very little color in them. This is my broken box. 
<laughs> you have a broken box? Yeah, Opal Sprague. So this, <laughs> don't ask me why I keep them. In oh. my broken box, you can see a lot of these and there's just, they're very heavily white. Uh, these are natural opals. They're not doublets. They're not triplets, but they, uh, they don't have a lot of color in them and there's a lot of inclusions. So that is not going to be an expensive opal there at all. But if you're interested in opal, we can help you out. Okay, this is a rare instance of kind of a fire opal, but it's not Mexican. Oh. This is Ethiopian, but it's very orange, but it still has fire in it. You can see that it's got some nice colorations. It's throwing some colors. So sometimes the Ethiopians can get very orange you know, base, but it's very orange, very deep, you know, as opposed to ones that are really, really white. Like here, we got a great one here. I love this opal, but you can see. So in the Ethiopians, you know, they can go anywhere from a, a, a whitish matrix to really kind of a, a beautiful, deep orange matrix. Intarsia. Intarsia can be anything. It's, it's odd. You often do see opals in intar intarsia. It's an art form where they take a lot of different stones, cut them, attach them together, <laughs> and they make designs out of them. And they can really be amazing. You know, this was a, really kind of a big thing, I'm gonna say 30 years ago. You don't see them very often anymore. And sometimes they can be crazy expensive. If you have a really good artist doing really nice intarsia, so that's what that is. Just oh, oil your opals. That's always something to tell people. They're on the fence with that. Different people are on the fence about that. When opals are being in their raw form, being shipped to cutters, they often store them in water. It'll oh. be like a little glass vial with water in it and there'll be a bunch of rough opals in it. And they can store that way a really long time because then you don't have to worry about the water drying or anything like that. And then when you take them out, because they've been kind of soaking in water, you know, you can really see where the coloration is and where the colors are so that it helps the cutters cut. Your opal can get wet, it likes it. So oil, there are different schools of thought. There are some that go don't at all. I have kind of, just because I heard it years ago and I do it, I will take the tiniest bit of, you know, oil either, I hate to say a skin oil or even <laughs> in it, your opal will kind of like it. And, um, but that's me. There are going to be people who argue about that. You know, for me, I have found like a personal connection with, you know, just your, just your, your, your human opal. oil alone will just help, help keep that little bit of moisture in there. But again, that's me, that's not, okay. This time we talked about the October birthstone, opals. Woo! If you are interested in opals, you know what we can do? We'll put a couple on, I'll pick out some really nice ones. We'll put them on toddallen.com. We can put them there for sale. So we're gonna continue our journey of gemstones and release different videos. So make sure you subscribe, you like, if you like the content. But it's been great fun talking about opals. So see you later. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, yeah. <laughs>